This episode of Writing Excuses is brought to you by Audible. Visit audiblepodcast.com slash excuse to start your free trial membership. Season 10, Episode 1. This is Running Excuses, Season 10! No, seriously, where do you get your ideas? 15 minutes long. Because you're in a hurry. And we're not that smart. I'm Brandon. I'm Mary. I'm Howard. And I'm Dan. And we are starting our 10th season of Writing Excuses. And we wanted to do something different for this season we've been thinking about for a long time. We also identified a problem that we have, which is that our students often wish and express a desire to be taking writing courses, but can't either reach them or can't afford them and things like that. And so we thought we would approach that. So what we're doing is we have structured the entire season as a master class. We will be doing theory and exercises and, of course, our usual banter and well, the occasional. And one thing, well, one thing to keep in mind here is that Brandon just called you all students instead of listeners. Mm. It's on. And that means <laughs> homework. Yes. So some of the changes we're going to be making are writing prompts are going to be transforming into writing exercises. Now, we will still occasionally be doing a writing prompt. Most of the time, we'll be doing these with wild cards. What the format is going to be is we're going to do each month a topic. And we've posted these on our website. And in conjunction with that topic, we will do two theory episodes where we talk and approach that. We will also do a Q&A episode with listeners about that topic. We will also have one wild card episode, usually the second one of the month, which is going to be nothing no relation whatsoever. It will be our usual unfocused chaos that you're used to from the previous nine seasons. Um, the goal of that is we know that some of you listen very intermittently. You just grab episodes that are interesting to you. We don't want to break what's working. So you should still be able to listen to all of this independently and not change your listening habits. However, if you listen straight through and do the assignments as a sign, the goal is to help walk you through this year through a story that you're working on. But we don't want you to think that we're taking you back to 101 levels. Yes. We believe that you have been listening for several seasons and that you are here because you are committed and want to improve your craft, not because you are just starting. Right. And if you're a brand new listener, this is still a great place to start. Uh, we'll be giving you the basics that you need. We'll help you through it. And uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for listening. So let's launch into it. No, seriously, where do you get your ideas? We, as writers, one of the most common questions we're asking, asked is where do we get our ideas? And it's become something of a cliche among writers that that's what fans ask. But even when I'm doing a, an intensive workshop, we often see people who struggle with getting from the gee whiz cool idea to an actual story. So, so month one is going to focus on ideas. And we'll be doing two podcasts. The first will be about generating ideas, and the second one will be about taking an idea and developing it. Um, in this podcast, we're going to talk about idea generation, and we're each going to talk about where we get our ideas and how we choose which ideas are actually good ones. So one of the things you will find is that everybody starts in different places. I tend to have what I call the gee whiz idea, which is sometimes it can be something that I have seen in a bit of research, like mm -hmm. honey ants are these ants that drink a lot of nectar and they get really big and they become the food source for their colony. What would happen if there was a sentient species that did that? What would that civilization look like? So that's an interesting gee whiz idea, but then I had to struggle to get it to us. Right. Mm -hmm. One thing I've noticed about myself is that I very often have tone ideas, mm. meaning I'll be working on a piece and I'll consume some piece of media. I'll read a book or I'll see a movie or I'll just be thinking about some of my favorites and say, wow, I really wish I could do something like that. Uh, recently, I've been doing Mistborn books with a Western meets um, uh, Sherlock Holmes feel. Both are rich because I was experiencing that media and saying, I wish I could do something like that. Wait, I'm a writer. I can totally do something <laughs> like that. Uh, Mistborn um, came in the first place because I said, I want to do a fantasy heist novel. I love heist stories. Can I do this in a fantasy setting? And that's all tone. I'm looking to match a tone. And that's I never realized before how frequently I do that. Yeah. I, I do something very similar, but not so much trying to match the tone as just uh, the theme or the idea that somebody else has done. Mm. You know, I'll watch a, a movie, I'll read a book, 
and think that's so cool you know in a similar experience i mm -hmm. want to play with that idea mm -hmm. i can i'm an author um you know but my version of their story would be so different you know yes. i like what i like what theme they were exploring but i want to say different things about it I, oh, go ahead i Howard. just look at you know wow that's a cool thing i want to blow it up <laughs> <laughs> i want to and then but then i mean the first idea is i want to blow it up and my second thought is but what if I just set fire to it instead? No, 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 wait. Thermite. And, oh, wait, hang on. It's actually made out of aluminum. And I very quickly run down this dis destructive chain and will often end up at, you know, biological warfare instead of explosions. Now, it's... Howard, I know you also have science fiction ideas where you're like, wow, if I had this thing spinning at this rate in this weird orbit sort of technical makes my brain hurt sort of stuff, and then out of that comes from story with stuff blowing up. Yes, and that well, there is uh, a running the, theme. Yeah, the, yeah. The 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 uh, the James Bond movie uh, uh, Casino Royale, mm -hmm. which began with the uh, the parkour. Yeah, case. I think that's mm -hmm. the second one. Um, no, that's Casino. Is this Casino? Casino? Okay, Royale, yeah. Casino Royale with the with the urban running. Mm -hmm. um, I remember looking at that and thinking, you know, they, well, that's really neat. I wonder what that would be like in a rotating reference frame where gravity is a little lower. And from there, I ended up creating, you know, Parkata Urbatsu, which is right. the martial art of urban movement mm -hmm. in the Schlockiverse. And, and it's a, it is a long path from watching a John, James Bond movie to creating your own, you know, futuristic martial art. But I can, I can look at every chain in that path and see how I moved from an idea that was pretty cool and belongs to somebody else <laughs> to an idea that that is pretty much all me. Yeah, we can reference with this um, podcast we've done in the past about when you can be influenced and how to steal without mm -hmm. without actually stealing. How to be influenced, and so we'll link those in the liner notes. I think those will be helpful podcasts to relate oh, great. to this now one. You've made homework for me. Sorry, Howard. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Dan. Have you ever watched something, you, you said you get your ideas from, I want to do that. Yeah. Have you ever had the, they ruined that. I want to do it right. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, the, the famous one that I, I talk about a lot is, uh, is Battlestar Galactica, mm -hmm. which I adored, the reimagined series, and, and the way they were playing with the concept of what is a human, what does it mean to be human. And the opening credits of every episode talked about the Cylons and ended with, and they have a plan. But they totally didn't have a plan. <laughs> and you get to the end of that series, you get just to the end of the first season and realize they're making this up as they go. They don't have a plan. So I, I wanted to do both of those. I wanted mm -hmm. to play with my own version of the Cylons, which is what the partials are, uh, but I also wanted to figure out their plan in advance so that you could get to the end and go, oh my goodness, this all actually does make sense. Wait, so an idea can actually be like an outline? Oh, don't oh. get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, outlining's not for a long time. I know, I know, it, I know it's not, but, but the idea that... Yes. Yeah, in yes. this case, the idea, one idea was for the cool artificial people, and the other idea was for an outline. I want to, I want to construct this very mysterious outline. I wanted to be able to have multiple people who seem to be working together but are not, and have it all actually make sense when you see the gears moving behind it. Yeah, a lot of times when you're looking at a tone thing also, that there an outline comes inherent with that, like fantasy heist novel, there's an inherent structure there. So sometimes you do have that as part of your idea, but the, the challenge then is what you fill it with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the outline or the idea that appears to you out of nowhere does not suggest anything. Um, the, the cloning novel that I talk about all the time, which I have now finally sold, mm -hmm. um, I, I got that from watching uh, The Sixth Day, the Arnold Schwarzenegger cloning movie, and thinking, okay, I want to I do cloning, but I want to do it my own way. And, and I came up with my own cloning technology and, and thought, well, now what? Which I guess we'll talk about right. next week. We will talk about Where that next week. Where do we week. go with this idea that does not by itself suggest its own story? I want to ask one more question of you guys. How do you know which ideas are good and which ones aren't? Because as writers... Oftentimes, we have more ideas than we can write. Um, once in a while, you run into somebody who doesn't have enough ideas. We'll talk about that next. Um, but first, what, how do you separate the gems from the, from the rocks? Well, 
going back to the cloning story that mm -hmm. I was just talking about, I knew that one was great when I started telling people about it. Mm. And instantly, everyone I told said, oh, what about this? They would all come up Ooh. with their own ramifications of that mm -hmm. technology and start spinning off new ideas of their own. And I knew I had found a gem. Wow, so if you can come up with a pitch about it, you can get across easily to people. Well, I think it's not actually just the pitch. Mm -hmm. It's that when people start doing that, that demonstrates that there is a lot of room in that idea mm -hmm. for the story. There's potential. But there is attractive depth. Yes. Right. Okay. So attractive depth. I like that a lot. Um, for me, it's a mix of how excited I am and um, about whether the idea actually suggests a conflict and a story. When I think about it, does it inspire me to begin spinning off directions? Or is it a, gee whiz, but that's not a story. Which of those is it? And um, I end up taking the ones that suggest more, that set, suggest a problem. And those are the ones I spend more time mulling over. And it's really the ideas that really start attracting other ideas that are important. We'll talk about that next week as well. I, if the idea is just so compelling that I want to start working on it instead of working on the stuff that is currently paying the bills, that's usually a really good sign that I have a problem. Mm. Um, <laughs> and we all well, know you have a yeah, problem, Howard. But well, what I I make a point that the part of my brain that generates ideas needs to be rewarded for generating the idea, and I accomplish that by writing the idea down. If I've got something that is consuming my thoughts and and distracting me from the ideas I'm currently executing on. I'm pretty sure that's a good idea, and so I will write down all you know, a whole bunch of notes about it, and and I know it's good, and I'll and then I can let it go and get on with getting work done. Awesome. Let's stop for our book of the week, Mary. The book of the week that I'd like to recommend to you this week is Lock In by John Scalzi. Now, one of the cool things for me about Lock In is that John started with this idea for. A, for this game, and you'll hear him talk about this in some of his interviews. There's this really cool idea for a game for people who are locked into their bodies and using mechanical apparatus, or uh, threeps, short for 3PO, to move around. And he had this fantastic idea, and he did all this world building. That idea is not in the novel anywhere. <laughs> not, it's not even referred to in a side note or in a news broadcast. It is not referenced anywhere in the novel. But all of the world building and other ideas they had that came with it are in the novel. And so all of the idea generation, basically he started with an idea and then went two steps down to a new one, and that's the novel that he, he wrote. It is brilliantly narrated in two different editions. Uh, one is by Will Wheaton and the other is by Amber Benson. The reason it's in two different editions is because, and a lot of people will read the text version and not realize this, the main character is not given a gender because the main character became locked in at the age of two and has always lived in an android body, so is not gender identifiable. That's awesome. And yes. so that is so cool. It's such a cool idea. Mm. <laughs> very, 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 very fascinating. If you go to uh, audiblepodcast.com slash excuse, uh, you can start a trial membership with Audible, and you've got two choices for this book. You can get it narrated by Amber Benson. You can get it narrated by Will Wheaton. And uh, it's awesome either way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome either way. Excellent. So, ideas. Let's say we have listeners who are struggling either identifying the good ideas or even generating them in the first place. How can we help our students? What can they do to have better ideas and come up with more of them? One of the things that I like to talk about is um, going two or three ideas deep, which is you have your first idea. Mm -hmm. And that idea is probably related to something that was floating around. So you are probably not the only person who's having that idea. Right. So you go one idea deeper than that. So let's say that my idea is, um, what about, this is going to be a terrible idea, what about a team that, that plays basketball with oranges? Ooh. <laughs> and then You've then read you, my next book already? <laughs> see? And then it's like, oh, Dan's working on that. Okay, well, <laughs> the, the part that I'm most excited about that is the oranges. So what if it's not a team? What it's, if it's an individual, an assassin, 
who kills people with oranges. <laughs> oh, well, assassin is way cooler. I'm more excited about the assassin than I am about the oranges. So, an assassin who uses random implements as their hallmark that they kill with something you're carrying on you. Yes. Something like that. Yeah. You know, so he has killed with oranges before, or she has, because they found somebody with an orange. But whatever the person happens to carry with them, they will use to kill. Like, now they're killing with a Hugo Award. That's an awesome idea. So they, they, it ends up, by pure chance, being an orange every time. <laughs> And because he's getting pigeonholed by the media. He's like, I'm not the orange killer, guys. That's pure coincidence. And they're discounting the other murders. They don't, they, they don't give him credit. No, no, that wasn't him. This killer used a banana. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. It's, it's not a sketch. Use a um, but that's let's... what I mean when I'm talking about an idea that's too deep. Yes. 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 Okay, so if, if you are having trouble even getting to this point. Mm -hmm. um, error. To, to, so many of us have talked about um, how we get ideas from other sources. Make sure you are consuming media. Make sure you mm -hmm. are reading books. Make yeah. sure you are reading science articles. Get on Twitter and follow Wired Magazine, Science Channel, all of these places that are just overflowing with amazing new technologies in mm -hmm. you know, neuroscience, in robotics, in you know, Old space technology. travel. Yeah. Like the um, uh, surgeon's apprentice, or chirurgeon, however you say it. Chirurgeon's apprentice <laughs> just did this whole thing about a rotating, a, a wind up rotator, rotary saw for surgery from oh, the. Oh, gosh, I saw it. Oh, that I was, was just terrific. like, I want to tell stories with that <laughs> terrible, terrible instrument of destruction. Yeah. Asking yourself what could go wrong is yeah. a great place to start. Look at mm -hmm. one of these, these pieces or read, you know, history and say, what could have gone wrong that didn't, and let's make it yeah. go wrong. A, a few years ago, um, when I was first really trying to teach myself how to write short fiction, I, I spent a week at Mary's house in Portland, and uh, I had listened to uh, some radio show on the drive there about memory and about how a scientist in New York has just developed a drug that can, that can mm -hmm. wipe memory. And just based on that, I wrote four or five different short stories all on this one concept of, of erasing memory chemically. It just, that you know, is it's pretty funny. cool. You, you, mentioned, you mentioned Twitter. Um, from a humor standpoint, I refer to Twitter, and I'm coming back to the orange, I refer to Twitter <laughs> as the garden of low-hanging fruit because you will see something happens, and on Twitter, 10,000 people will all tell the same joke. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. It is fascinating to watch, and as a humorist, I watch it and I ask myself, you know, what's what's the fruit that's higher up in the tree? What is it that what is it that I can reach for that's different? And it's this same principle, you know, we're we're looking for not the easy idea, not the idea that immediately leaps to mind. What's the idea that's past it, where you have to push a couple of other ideas out of the way or synthesize a couple of things and find something that hasn't already been hashtagged a million times. Wow, that's a that's a really great you know, metaphor. Uh, what you just said about synthesizing, that is, uh, that is a great source of ideas. Mm -hmm. If you have a couple of things, or maybe you just have one thing that might be cool, but you don't know what to do, mash it together with something else. Take random stuff and just combine them in new ways that no one's thought of before. Jane Austen with magic. No one would ever do that. <laughs> Wild West We're fantasy heist. Here. We've said at the beginning that what we want to do is start giving you writing exercises rather than just prompts. This won't be every time, but we will be doing it consistently. And for a given month, we will probably build on the exercises we've given you. We'll wipe it clean for the next month with the next topic. But so if you do these, you can then use them the next week with the um, writing exercise we give you. If you skip a week and don't do it, we will make it so that each exercise can be done cold as well. But we're going to give you this writing exercise today. So I want you to write down five different story ideas in 150 words or less. Uh, think of them as little note cards. I want one story idea to come from interviewing or talking to someone, one to come from research, so reading, some, reading a magazine or a book, one from observation. Take a walk. If you see someone walking down the street, think, why are they going that direction? And see what story comes from that. A piece of media. Something that you've watched, take an idea and shift it slightly. Or music. See if you can be inspired by music, either the lyrics or the tune. The tone. Excellent. Well, this has been Writing Excuses, Season 10. 
Hopefully you will enjoy this masterclass as we go through it this year. And you are totally out of excuses, so now go right.